Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake, and today we're talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's finally here. It's been a long time coming. Uh, this is what some Pokemon fans have been looking for for a long time. You know, a big shakeup and a fully 3D adventure in a massive open-ended world where yeah, capture and battle Pokemon in a more fully realized way. While Game Freak has dipped their toes in this with some previous games, Arceus kind of marks a completely new step for the Pokemon franchise. Now, it's definitely not perfect, but we've all been playing it here on the team and have absolutely been having a ton of fun. Uh, the world has its issues, and there's a bit of an emphasis on grind from the early hours where it starts a bit slow to the end game stuff, uh, but the open world concept, the exploration, and the way catching and battling and progression with the Pokedex building works, yeah, the, the graphics aren't great, but the game is really cool and fun and fresh, and I think it's what the series needed. And just so you know, uh, before we go any further, this footage was captured uh, through a Switch OLED running docked on a TV, and uh, we're keeping it as spoiler-free as possible, but that's tricky though. I know some Pokemon fans are very sensitive to seeing certain things, gameplay elements, anything. So if you're big on spoilers, keep that in mind. You know, we still want to show different points of the game and various levels of progress. Uh, so getting into it, the basic step is that you create your character and you end up in the Hisui region. Uh, you don't know how or why, but you quickly meet the local people and get drafted into their sort of uh, Pokemon discovery expedition. As was revealed in that original original official reveal trailer thing, uh, this is a much earlier point in the span of Pokemon lore and history. Technology is scarce, life is simpler, and people frankly don't know too much about Pokemon. So there's a bit of fun that comes with all that. It's different. Uh, your goals involve helping the people settling in this land to learn to live with and understand Pokemon. So it's up to you to battle and catch and build out a big Pokedex. Now, the general flow has you going along story missions, but there's a lot of stuff to mess around with in the meantime. Villagers and locals will give you side quest things called requests that uh, usually net you some rewards or just help the town or community in some way. But what you're mostly doing is getting out there and doing the Pokemon thing. You're catching, you're leveling them up, uh, you're getting stronger and building out the Pokedex. This is the main focus and everything requires you to really do a lot of what you may have already done. Uh, you don't catch a Pokemon once and that's it. You catch them multiple times to complete a certain Pokedex objective. One in like a long, long list of them. Like say, battle a Pokemon three times, catch it three times, then catch it six times, catch different variants, catch a male and a female, catch one at night. So every time you catch or defeat a Pokemon or a new Pokemon, it's really still exciting because you're accomplishing a bunch of things in your Pokedex and then cashing in all those things. So you're always feeling like you're being rewarded. You're always progressing towards a new rank in your group, which serves kind of like how badges from gym leaders in previous games helped you uh, work with stronger Pokemon and stuff like that, the perks. Uh, now, along with that, there's also a bunch of crafting and recipes to learn and work on as well. And your Pokemon are also rewarded with XP and stuff, just not only from battling, but also catching. Now this all goes hand in hand with the open world stuff. You venture around and find Pokemon in real time, just hanging out in the environment. And it's more involved than in Sword and Shield. You know, they're floating in the water, they're walking around, they're flying around, they're hiding, and you can hide in grass and creep up on them and try to catch them or battle them. And battles go down in real time right there in the environment. And it doesn't get old. And for me, yes, this is the Pokemon you'd always kind of been hoping to see. It feels much more real and cool, just like how you've conjured it up in your head probably since you were a kid. Now, sometimes the Pokemon wandering around in the environment seem kind of dumb and kind of dopey, not much going on in the AI department, which is a bummer, but some of them uh, can see you and run away, or some of them can get pissed and try and attack your character so you can dodge out of the way before tossing out a Pokeball with a Pokemon to like battle them. Now, battles themselves are pretty straightforward. The newest thing is the addition of the ability to change how much power you put into your moves. So if your Pokemon has battled enough and mastered a certain move, uh, you will have the ability to add more power into an attack or 
less than normal power into an attack. Uh, this is for various reasons, you know, put more behind your attack to hopefully cause more damage, but you'll likely lose a turn. Uh, put less power into an attack, uh, maybe you're trying to catch a Pokemon, something like that, and also maybe have the ability to get a second attack in, a second turn. I'm kind of explaining it terribly simply for time's sake, but it can shake things up a bit in a good way that isn't overly complicated, but lets you strategize a bit more, and your ability to see who moves next, and it all makes it just feel a bit more RPG-ish. Also, uh, there's an added level of freedom in learning new moves and swapping them in and out. It makes things a bit more consistently interesting. Just go to town and learn some new moves and swap them in and jump back out in the field. It's nice, but battles can be pretty challenging too. I've noticed the last few Pokemon games have stepped up the challenge a bit here and there, and in Arceus, we found it pretty noticeable. It's not the hardest game to cruise through, but still, you will be challenged from time to time, especially because you can find bigger, more powerful red-eyed Pokemon out in the environment that can just frankly really kick your ass. But it's very satisfying. They feel almost like little bosses. Uh, the, the Pokemon in your party are also just used for various things, like throw them at a tree to get them to shake some berries out, or smash a rock for crafting resources, or to fly, or ride like a mount. It really does a good job of selling that whole like Pokemon and humans working together on an adventure type thing. Uh, it's really cool and it makes getting around and exploring and crafting and grinding a bit more fun. Does it get a little repetitive here and there with the catching and battling constantly? Yeah, but it always feels like you're stumbling across a new Pokemon and you're getting that little adrenaline rush or you're always learning something else and you're always progressing. You're always building that deck. You're always gaining. So I liked it. Unfortunately, the world itself is lifeless. I, you probably knew I was going to say this if you've seen any gameplay of it before. Uh, it's really big and it's fun to venture through and stumble upon the Pokemon, like I said, but other than some shifts in biomes, it's just so weird and dead. Uh, part of the reason comes from the fact that it doesn't look that great especially docked to a TV. I feel like it's like the Final Fantasy VII world map. I'm not talking the new Final Fantasy VII, I'm talking about the old one. As much as there's changes in elevation, like it still just looks flat and weird. But at least the colors pop and credit where credit is due. Like the skybox itself is amazing and the colors and sunsets and sunrise look fantastic. But otherwise, it's just a drab landscape with not much going on, and it kind of hurts the experience a little bit, especially because, like, there's not a lot of, like, dungeons or cool hidden areas. There's some, but not a lot. And it's just rough looking. I I'm disappointed in Game Freak here. You know, you guys have a bajillion dollars. You should amp this up a bit. Uh, graphics aren't everything, though, uh, but it's not about the graphics. It's about the feel and the atmosphere to get you engaged in the game, and there isn't really enough. For some people, I think the boring areas and the constant grinding might get on your nerves or turn you off, but we found ourselves at least consistently entertained despite these problems, even being aware of them. We just like Pokemon. Uh, the end game, after you roll credits, ends up giving you a bunch more game and more battles and stuff to do, so that's good. But my only other issue is that Along with the world being lifeless, the game just needs to lighten up in general and just get a little bit more entertaining. I, I like being able to see my Pokemon and ride them and take photos with them and engage with townspeople, but I just didn't really like any of the characters too much, aside from like the Hisui like clan faction leader guy and girl. Uh, it's not that they don't try here, it's just that it didn't click with me personally. Uh, the game doesn't feel as lighthearted and fun and quirky as it could. Now that also goes with like finding cool caves or spooky paths or dungeons, like those types of memorable moments. There's really not a lot of it here. Here and there, yeah, but like it's more about just the catching and the building the decks and the grinding and the training. It's a lot more straightforward here. The game has a slow start overall and it, it does get better, but yeah, and again, to reiterate, I, I, since I don't have time to explain every single new element, overall, it's a really good Pokemon game. Battles are fun, catching is fun, and for some folks, like me in this specific instance, the grind can get you hooked. Even if the world is boring, exploring it is fun because of the interaction with the wild Pokemon and your own Pokemon helping you out. It feels closer to that fully realized thing more than ever, and most importantly, dude, it's fresh. I've pretty much enjoyed every Pokemon game up until this point, but I was still starting to feel this creeping sense of it being kind of stale and whatever, and I think this is exactly what the series needed straight up. 
even with the notable substantial flaws, it's a fresh game. And I'm looking forward to this being like the foundation for Pokemon games moving forward, hopefully. I really hope so, because the next game could improve the world and exploration and more dungeon stuff and even more story, and it could be god tier. But if you're, like, you're a Pokemon fan, this is worth experiencing. Who am I kidding? You're probably already planning on trying it. If you've never played a Pokemon game, some people have asked me, uh, I don't know if this is the one to start with. Maybe start with something more casual like Pokemon Let's Go or something like that. But Arceus goes outside of its comfort zone and it tries something new. It stumbles here and there, but it gets a lot of points for being fresh and interesting and fun to play. So there you have it. That's Pokemon Arceus. It's pretty simple, but I'm going to be playing this one for a long time. I think Pokemon fans definitely are. There's a lot to chew on. There's some compelling stuff in the end game. Some of it takes a lot of work to see it all, but it's cool. And I can't wait to see where things go next. But uh, that's how this goes. I give you guys some pros, some cons and some personal opinion and now I want to hear yours. What do you think of this game so far if you jumped in? What's your favorite Pokemon that you've caught and, and built up in the game? Do you like the way the real-time catching works? Do you like sneaking around? Let's talk about anything Pokemon Legends Arceus down in the comments. Now if this helped you out and steered you one way or the other or just I don't know gave you some information all you got to do is click the like button. It really really helps us out and we'd appreciate it. But as always thank you guys for watching. I'm Jake Baldino. See you next time.